uh, our last, but definitely not least speaker is Bettina. Bettina Fack is, has studied library and information science, Protestant theology, philosophy and literature in Berlin. She has been working for the Leo Beck Institute in Jerusalem since nine, 2019. She managing the collection of uh, the Leo Beck Institute Jerusalem, taking care of the archive, library, and movie database, um, coordinating the digitalization of the archive and instructing the volunteers from Germany and Austria. She has researched the fate of private library of Leo Beck that has been looted in 43. She's written about the library of the Reich Security Main Office and the Jewish forced laborer who had to process the stolen book for them, first in Berlin, then in Theresienstadt, which touches upon, again, what you've told us, um, Caroline. So, Bettina, I give you the floor. Thank you very much, Lomit. Let me share my slides. Oh. And can you tell me, do you see my, my full screen presentation mode? Nice, good. Uh, today I will present our collections that might be helpful when doing provenance research. But first, let me give you some general information about the Leo Beck Institute. The Leo Beck Institute Jerusalem for the Study of German Jewish History and Culture is an international academic research institute. It was established to promote research into German and Central European Jewry in the modern era. The LBI was founded in 1955 by a diverse group of intellectuals and public figures. Among them were Martin Buber, Geshem Scholem, Shmuel Hugo Bergmann and Ernst Simon. The institute was named after the last public representative of German Jewry, Rabbi Leo Beck. The LBI has centers in Jerusalem, New York and London and maintains a working group in Germany. The work of the LBI Jerusalem focuses on promoting research, reaching out to the general public and safekeeping collections of material that are relevant for provenance research. One of these is our archival collection. The archive of the Leo Beck Institute Jerusalem contains hundreds of personal, family and institutional collections. These collections include a variety of historical documents from the late 18th century until the end of the 20th century. They document the lives of Central European Jews, both in their countries of origin as well as in their countries of immigration. Among the archival materials, one can find memoirs, diaries, official documents, letters and photographs. The materials pertain to daily life, community affairs, Wissenschaft des Judentums research, experiences of World War I and of migration, and engagement in the youth movement. And most importantly, for the purpose of provenance research, many collections document the histories of families. Thus, our archive can provide information when trying to identify a former owner that a provenance mark relates to, or when searching for family members of that former owner who emigrated to Israel. For the same reason, our Austrian Heritage Collection might be relevant to provenance research. The Austrian Heritage Collection includes over 100 audio and video interviews with Israelis of Austrian origin. The topic of the interviews is the experience before and after leaving Austria following Nazi occupation. After three years of work, we just now completed digitizing our archival collections. This means more than 700 of our archival collections, including the audio files of the interviews, are now available online. The digitization of the collection was funded by the German Foreign Office and completed in close cooperation with our partner institute, LBI New York. I invite you to check out our collections. This is how you can find them. Uh, on our website, navigate to the tab for the archive. There. Uh, click the button that says search the archive catalog. And you will be forwarded to the catalog of the Center for Jewish History. This is where you can search or browse through not just our collections, 
The Center for Jewish History catalog is a union catalog. That means you can search the holdings of multiple institutions at the same time. These are, for example, um, LBI New York, the Ivo Institute for Jewish Research, or the American Jewish Historical Society. Not only archival collections can serve as a source for provenance research, historical newspapers are just as important. One title that has proven itself to be very helpful is the Mitteilungsblatt of the Egun Olemerkas Europa, the newsletter of the Association of Immigrants from Central Europe. The Mitteilungsblatt was first published in 1932, the year the Egun was founded. It contains articles about current affairs, both in Europe and Mandate Palestine, literature reviews, advice how to cook with local ingredients, an abundance of uh, advertisements, announcements, and obituaries. A couple of the issues are bilingual. However, the vast majority of the issues has been written in German. Here at the LBI Jerusalem, we have an almost complete collection spanning the years 1932 until 2005. Until now, the only way to access this enormous trove of information has been a handmade index that Eli Rothschild had compiled over the decades. To facilitate access and usage of our collection, we therefore decided to digitize it. We just now started to scan those roughly 26,000 pages of the issues we hold. The plan is, to make the Mitteilungsblatt of the Egun available online via the compact memory collection of the Frankfurt University Library. And finally, Carolina mentioned it already, I'm especially delighted to announce another brand new project together with the Leibniz Institute for Jewish History and Culture, Simon Dudnov, we will explore the intellectual and cultural legacy of the Hochschule für die Wissenschaft des Judentums in the post-war period. The project, German Jewish Cultural Heritage Abroad, is funded by the German Research uh, Foundation, DFG. It will focus on the fate, meaning, function, and impact of the Hochschule Library. The Hochschule, founded in 1872 in Berlin, held a remarkable library collection that provided an invaluable foundation for the work of the Institute's scholars, students, and international guests. This library consisted of about 60,000 volumes and included the personal collections of Moritz Abraham Levy and Julius Fürst, as well as the book collection of Abraham Geiger, one of the founding fathers of Reform Judaism. This library was not only among the most comprehensive Jewish libraries of scientific and rabbinic literature in pre-war Germany, it also was the last serving Jewish readers until 1942. After it fell prey to the Nazi plunder, parts of the collection were destroyed. However, other parts survived and were disseminated between numerous countries in the immediate post-war period. Our aim is to map the dispersion of the books from the Hochschule's library. By following the dislocated books, we will explore the network of Jewish institutions and intellectuals that were engaged in the salvage of Nazi looted German Jewish books after the war. This approach, inspired by material culture studies, will allow us to illuminate a unique German Jewish spiritual diaspora interconnected by these very books. The outcomes of the project will address a diverse audience. Papers, publications, and an academic conference will present the results to other researchers. At the same time, we want to draw the attention of the general public to this complex topic. To this end, we plan to create an exhibition about the history of the Hochschule, its destruction, and the dispersion of its book collection. However, the exhibition won't be a finished static product. It rather will continue to evolve because we want to invite the audience to actively contribute to it by helping to search for the books that once belonged to the Hochschule Library. While the colleagues from the Looted Cultural Assets Database have demonstrated the potential of a collaborative approach to provenance documentation, the projects Every Name Counts and Stolen Memory of our colleagues from the Arolsen Archives 
have successfully pushed the idea of collaboration even further by inviting not only other experts to contribute, but the general public. We want to follow their example. Therefore, coming to the end of my presentation, I want to take this chance and invite everybody who is listening to help us find the books that belong to the Hochschule Library. Here, you see some of the stamps that show that the book has been owned by the Hochschule Library. I invite you to take a screenshot of this slide. Note that sometimes the institution was called Hochschule, sometimes Lehranstalt. Underneath the images, you can see our email address. If you come across a book that contains one of these stamps, please contact us and share your find with us. Your contributions will not only help us do our research, they will represent a test case of how to extend the existing research infrastructure by inviting citizen scientists to join in the search for Nazi looted books. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bettina. Thank you, all of the speakers. It's been a fascinating afternoon, and I'm sure I'm not speaking only of my own behalf. 